Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are talking about the chapter two and uh, that is test management. As a part of this, we are still in 2.3, which is quite long, uh, talking about the risk-based testing and other approaches for test prioritization and effort allocation. Now in this tutorial, we are getting into the next part of it. That is 2.3.2, risk-based testing techniques. As a part of this tutorial, we are going to understand more about what kind of techniques can be used by any organization or any team in order to measure their risk parameters. And so there are certain techniques which can be very helpful. And here as a part of this section, we are trying to get introduced to certain techniques which could be very helpful in determining the risk uh, and uh, giving them a mitigation chance and with help of your test cases, how to allocate your effort accordingly to that. So there are a number of techniques for risk-based testing. Some of these techniques are highly informal. Example includes approaches where the tester analyzes quality risk during exploratory testing. Of course, this could be a very informal way because exploratory testing does not have anything written in formal, like no test cases, no documentation in terms of uh, observing any kind of behavior. It's just that a casual interaction with the product and certainly you do find a lot of issues, but uh, probably if you find something that's very really difficult to reproduce or understand that what exactly you did in order to get this issue. So this can help guide the testing, but can lead to an excessive excessive focus on the likelihood of the defect, not their impact, and does not include even the cross-functional stakeholder inputs. In addition, such approaches are subjective and dependent on the skills, experience, and preferences of the individual tester because everyone has their own perspective, everyone has their own intuition to look at a product, and of course, they may have different way of uh, testing it, and in terms of that, probably you find something as a defect, but the other person does not really look into that section at all. So chances of getting you know things being missed is quite high. And uh, we certainly make use of these techniques, uh, but not uh, to the areas where it is critical, right? So example of such lightweight approaches include pragmatic risk analysis and management. In short, we call it as PRAM. There's another one which is called as systematic software testing, SST and uh, product risk management in short called as Prisma as well. And uh, in addition to these uh, unusual attributes of risk-based testing, these techniques typically have the following attributes. What is that? Evolved over time based on industry experience with risk-based testing, especially in industry where questions of efficiency are important. Predicated on the extensive involvement of cross-functional team of stakeholders, representing both system and business and technical perspective during the initial risk identification and assessment. Optimized when introduced during the earliest phases of a project, when the options do mitigate, quality risk are maximized and when main work product and byproducts of the risk analysis can help to influence the specification and implementation of the product in a way that minimizes the risk. Plus, use the generated output, that is the risk matrix or risk analysis table, as the basis for the test plan and the test condition, and thus all subsequent test management and analysis activity would follow. Support the reporting of the test result in terms of the residual risk to all the levels of testing stakeholders, and this all includes the attribute which you can have from these kind of techniques like PRAM, SST and Prisma. I'm also attaching a document in my description of this video that if you want to look into more details at how exactly these techniques are implemented or what exactly is the control flow behind that, how do you implement them in real time, you can have a look on that. Okay, so there's a link in the description. Just look into that to address more idea about the same. Further to add, of course, as we are talking about the lightweight techniques on the same side, we do have something more on the heavyweight side, which is like for more uh, critical projects or more critical components. Uh, we are looking into applying certain better techniques to you know, get a deeper dive and make sure that you are covering them to the extreme and uh, <clears throat> you have a great effort to be applied in terms of mitigating them. So like more formal techniques, lightweight techniques allow the use of weighing of the likelihood and impact factors to emphasize business or technical risk. Unlike more formal techniques, uh, though lightweight techniques also include use only two factors, likelihood and impact, and use simple qualitative 
judgments and scales. At the formal side, a heavyweight technique uh, that is end of the scale, the test manager has a number of options available, which is quite helpful when it comes to the more critical and more complex application and we just don't have a chance to lose. So there are certain techniques which you can look on the heavy side. So of course, uh, Pram, Prisma and uh, SST are the lightweight techniques, but definitely we do have something more that is from the heavyweight. That is hazard analysis, cost of exposure, failure more than effective analysis, uh, quality function deployment, and fault tree analysis. Now, hazard analysis, which basically extends the analytical process upstream, attempting to identify the hazards uh, at that underline each risk. So we just get into more of the deeper dive of the impact <clears throat> which you can have in terms of determining that if in case this wrap and risk happens, then what what could be the possible outcome at uh, that point of time and how we are going to handle that? Was this, is this going to be like uh, going to claim a life or probably can claim the entire product itself to be failure problem? Like, uh, when you talk about appliances, how secured your motherboard is in a washing machine? And uh, if in case a simple shot could happen, like short circuit happens, does that burn the machine altogether? Or it just has a regulator which cuts off the supply and uh, it just limits the short circuit to the motherboard, not to the entire product. So those kind of analysis is what you can look forward to. Cost of exposure where the risk assessment process involves determining for each quality risk item, three factors. Number one, the likelihood which we know already of a failure related to the risk item. Number two, the cost of loss, that what kind of expensiveness it will have and what kind of impact in terms of financial losses it will, he, it will be having associated with the typical failure related to the risk item. And should it occur in the production, then what exactly goes wrong? And number three, the cost of testing for such failures, that how much effort we are going to put, how much time we are going to allocate in order to measure such things and mitigate it. The next one is FMEA, which is failure mode and effect analysis and its variants, where quality risk, their potential causes, and their likely effects are identified, and then severity, priority, and detection ratings are assigned to that. So as you see, that is just not a very straightforward uh, assessment of a risk item. We get a deeper dive and do a better analysis with a lot of other figures, which will help you to determine uh, differences between different types of risk items and quantify them in terms of uh, you know giving them a better prioritization and effort allocation on the other side we also have something called as qfd quality function deployment which is the quality risk uh, management technique with uh, testing implications specifically being concerned with quality risk that arise from an incorrect or insufficient understanding of the customer or uh, user requirement. So this is more on the point of like uh, requirement refinement to make sure that if in case uh, any of the risk happens just because of a simple misunderstanding or probably an incomplete requirement, then that comes as a challenge for us, of course. Fall tree analysis, which is a graphical representation of the same in order to get into the deeper point or calling it as low level, low level analysis in order to analyze that what exactly is the root cause behind that. So where various actual observed failures or potential failures are subjected to a root cause analysis, starting with defects that could cause the failure, then with the errors or defects that could cause those defects as well continuing on until the various root causes are identified. So you just create a routing system, kind of like you draw a line straight and then start breaking down in a lower and lower volume. And you see that as the smallest unit where generally the issue happened. All right, so you completely analyze everything till the bottom. So that was some of the things which we just wanted to talk from the test techniques of risk-based testing. Of course, this is the part one. We'll be talking some more information about this in the next segment. That is the part two. So stay tuned for that. All right, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else with you, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.